This new low profile keyboard from Asus is packing a lot. So let me show you a few things on the new Asus ROG Falchion RX low profile 65% wireless mechanical gaming keyboard. That's a mouthful. Am I saying that right? Falchion? Falchion? Not too sure. When I looked it up, it seems to be referencing a sword. And I guess we can say this keyboard is sword-like with how slim and absolutely sharp it is. Sharp as in good looking. Not like you're gonna cut yourself when you're using it. Now as far as in your box, you get all your paperwork, shortcut guide, few stickers, detachable USB-C braided cable, dongle extension, which is super cool. Got that little clip on the bottom so you can actually slide it onto your mouse pad. Love that little touch there. You get a case which can flop down onto the keyboard or you can actually set the keyboard into it. And then of course you're gonna get your keyboard. Now I wanna kick it off with the sound test of this keyboard because that's gonna play a big role into everything I'm about to talk about. And I'm also going to give you a sound test of the new Fnatic Streak LP being low profile and the Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro again being low profile. So as far as this keyboard sounding the best out of all of them, in my opinion, there's a few things playing a role in that. As far as the switches, we'll take a look at here in a second. And they're also lube. There's two layers of damping foam in this tiny little keyboard. No radiation, no ping, no nothing. And I think a big part of that is because this one is much more low profile compared to the other low profiles. Stabilizers? pretty good as well. Maybe the space bar could use maybe a pinch of lube. So as far as this keyboard being low profile, it is very low. And as far as stock form sitting on your desk, it is pretty much flat right there. Now underneath it, you do have two levels of pop out feet, one nice low one, and then one taller one. And as far as me, someone that never uses the adjustable feet on any keyboard, I caught myself having to use this with the highest adjustment. It just truly sits very low. Now you can also take this case that came with the keyboard and slap the keyboard inside it. So you got the these rubber feet on the bottom but then when you flip it over the whole inside is rubber and you actually have these connection points where it's going to lock into so let's slap the keyboard in there and as you see it's sitting in there it's incredibly solid and it raises it up just slightly of course now you cannot use your adjustable feet but i do like this layout better than the stock layout it honestly stays a little bit more put on your desk since you have those big rubber feet on the bottom because as you see on the underside of the keyboard you just have these four rubber feet there on the bottom of this case you got these big triangles but of course that will depend on your surface as you see the switch on the back left of the keyboard you have bluetooth wired and wireless mode and they're stating you get up to 430 hours i'm pretty sure that's in bluetooth mode as far as me was mainly wired and via the dongle which can store in the back of the keyboard here just magnetizes in there it's not super tight wish it locked in there as it comes out fairly easy so if you're someone that travels with your keyboard i would not recommend you keeping the dongle in the keyboard put it somewhere safer maybe slap it in this dongle and since it has a nice clip on the back you can just take it yeah That'll, that'll be kind of corny. Now this switch I passed over, you can actually change it to PC or Mac mode. And the really cool thing is the keycaps on it, you actually have your Mac keys already on it. Me being a PC and Mac user, I absolutely love touches like that. Now the last button on the back left of this keyboard, you can actually cycle it through your volume, your media, your brightness, or some macros. And you actually have this slidable knob on the back to adjust the brightness or again, the volume right on your PC. Really cool touch. I mean, cramming all of these features into this this tiny 65% low profile keyboard right here on the back is awesome. You all know I love and live for innovation and this is what we wanna see. Now the RGB on this keyboard is plenty bright, nothing excessive, nothing overboard by any means, which I like, it's very nice and subtle. They are using ABS keycaps with a UV coating, which is gonna help with that RGB shining through. And you can see that RGB light is right in the middle of these switches. So it's coming right out on that legend really nice and clear. Now there's one thing that drove me nuts about this keyboard is whenever it went into 
rest mode or you shut down your computer and then fired it back up, it would always go back to the default RGB, which would be cycling the colors. So I'd have to go function and then left two or three times to get it back to my solid red. That's if I saved it in a software or set it on the keyboard. Hopefully that can be updated in a firmware or something. So I'm not sure why they decided to go with ABS keycaps. I mean, it's the same thing that Razer did with their Death Stalker. Now Fnatic, they learned with their 65% and they actually re-released it with PBD keycaps. And I really would have liked to see them right here. I've been using this keyboard for maybe a little over three weeks or so, and it is still looking pretty brand new. It's white, so you're not gonna see all that grease on there, but still, I would prefer PBD keycaps. And no, you are not gonna find any replacements for these keycaps. And that could be the main reason they decided to go with ABS keycaps. Maybe they're cheaper and a little bit easier to mold with this design they have here, which is absolutely fantastic. You can see it connects on each four point right there, and they are just stable as a whistle. They do not budge one bit. That's a big thing I've been pointing out and really praising in my keyboard videos lately as far as keycaps really being stable and on point, kind of like that new Endgame gear we talked about with the dual rails on the side which kept them really stable. These are the stablest I've ever felt. I mean, they don't budge one bit. And that also goes right along with these switches. They're using an X stabilizer to keep them balanced there. And then on the sides of the switch, you can actually see these little notches coming out of them, which keep it stabilized into that housing as well. Again, from the keycaps to the switch, they are so nice and balanced. Now these RX low profile switches have a one millimeter actuation, a 2.8 millimeter bottom out and a 45 gram actuation force. Now, as far as the performance of this keyboard, Board. Again, I used it primarily in wireless mode, but I did also use it in wired mode when it was charging, which the top lights up green when it's charging, which is pretty darn annoying. You do have the Omni receiver, so you can pair up the keyboard and the mouse. I wasn't able to test that since I don't have an Asus mouse but you have that option. And they say you have the Speed Nova wireless connection, which it was absolutely flawless at the 1000 Hertz it comes in as far as wireless or wired mode, no disconnections, no interruptions or anything butter smooth. Now this new keyboard from Asus is gonna come in at 170 bucks and there's no denying, I absolutely love it. My few nitpicks are again, as far as the RGB cycling and then it being incredibly low. It feels like a laptop keyboard. That's the best way to describe it. And that's probably where I recommend it, a working keyboard rather than a gaming keyboard. And I really think that's where I'll be keeping it over with my Mac. So there we go, the new Asus Faucheon RX low profile mechanical wireless keyboard. I'm sure I screwed that entire thing up, but I hope this video was able to help you out and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.